That would be interesting. So immediately off the board, we have Zack, Thresh, and Nami being taken away, as well as Zed. You know, Thresh has been a consistent ban throughout this entire tournament. Even though they moved his passive from the Q to his E to get that extra auto attack damage down, it hasn't stopped him from being a real game-changing champion. The real difference between him and Blitzcrank being that Thresh's hook takes time to cast out, whereas Blitzcrank's hooks is near instantaneous, you know, it's a much faster casting speed. So Thresh is a little bit easier to balance simply because it's a harder skill shot to hit. But I but I completely understand why he's banned. Um, and then of course Diana and Shen being taken off the board, but what do you think about this Nami ban? This is actually a very unusual ban to see. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Nami had some small buffs, but not to a point where I've seen anyone playing her anymore. Uh, so I don't know if that's that's targeted or if that's trolling or or what exactly that is. Um, but we do see the Sona as the first pick. Sona is becoming very very contested. Well, she's becoming more popular in the PBE right now. They're looking at buffing her, giving her a little bit of extra base health, buffing some of her spells, as well as giving her a little bit of extra base armor. Not a lot more base armor. She's still going to be very squishy, and she's still going to be frail. But this is essentially reverting the nerfs and even going above and beyond that that Riot uh, gave her at the end of Season 2, and I don't think that this is a smart idea. It it's essentially... Okay, so... so Hawkeye, you know how this works, but I'll go ahead and explain this to people who don't. Um, supports that tend to come into favor these days are supports that haven't been nerfed in a very long time. That's why individuals like Tarek and Janna, uh, well, Janna now, but Tarek was strong. The same thing with Lulu. They were considered top-notch supports, heavily contested, because they hadn't been nerfed for a very long time. Their skills were still adjusted to different metas. And right now, Sona's kind of in this place where Tarek isn't something that she really has to worry about right now. Um, and even though Leona's very popular, it's not something that she that it's something that she can play around. Lulu right now, the cost of her poke is too heavy in the early game for her to really worry about it. And with the potential buffs coming to her, she's going to be a very heavily contested pick. She's going to be back like she was in season two, where everybody who supported needed to know how to play Sona. Yeah, I, and well, I, I'm surprised they're looking at buffs because she's already the most popular support in the game. Um, but here's what interests me is giving up the Sona Ezreal because that's a very powerful, or maybe not going to lock in the Ezreal, Sona Caitlyn. <laughs> Um, I, I take back everything I said. No, it's um, fine. Sona Ezreal is a very traditional poke comp in, in both Season 2 and Season 3. So, you know, I'm a little bit surprised to see Caitlyn come out just because Caitlyn is not going to be nearly at the same range that Sona is. And any poke coming out from Sona is going to put her in the line of fire. So I'm interested to see really what's going to happen with that. It it could lead to some problems down in the bot lane. But this Lulu pickup is is good nonetheless, and this Caitlyn pickup in response to it is also good, simply because Lulu's poke, I'm actually going to take a quick peek, but not talk about this until, uh, until everything is down, because I want to go... Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I thought was going on. Um, this isn't something that will show on stream until the three minute delay is over, but go ahead and take a look at the uh, runes and masteries for Lulu Hawkeye and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and where we'll be going once uh, once this is on delay. Hmm. Um, but in the meantime, we do have the Orianna pickup for the purple team. Orianna seems to be a pretty big staple of, uh, of the purple team right now. ROH definitely liking that kind of AoE and utility comp they've got going. Yeah, Ezreal Lulu is an interesting pickup um, against into a Sona Caitlyn. It, it can be very effective, but I think they're gonna they're gonna struggle early game. Interesting. That uh, who on earth is jungling for blue team? Um, if if they lock in that rumble, that could end up being really interesting. I've not <laughs> seen rumble in the jungle. I've, I've not. That's not something I've seen. Um, the the Nautilus was very effective for ROH last game, so it's not surprising to see them going back to it. But 
Yeah, the same thing with Oriana. Oriana was a really devastating individual in this last match. I'm more interested to see if they're going to pick out... Uh, yeah, see, there's no no rumble in the jungle. Don't worry, they're just trolling you. I'm interested to see if we're going to see the Cho'Gath come out again for the top lane. I really wouldn't be surprised if we did. Um, but this is this is kind of the... How do I put this? There's a certain detriment to picking champions consistently like this in tournaments. People are going to know what you're comfortable with and they're going to tear apart your team comps. So we've seen constantly Orianna, constantly Cho'Gath, constantly Nautilus. I mean, these are really individuals that could easily be banned out in the finals if they continue to show a lack of diversity in their team picks. Are you still there, Hawkeye? I'm still here. Sorry, okay. my microphone was muted. Oh, good job. Um, you, why do you always do this? D&D, &D, mute your mic. Hanging out with friends, mute your mic. I see how it is. I don't like you anymore. Wow, that, that, that turned very quickly. <laughs> um, <sighs> I don't know. I'm interested. The, the Cho'Gath has been really strong for him. It's something I'm surprised to see them not go back to. Because Cho'Gath can trade decently with Renekton. Not, not as well as with... Uh, Cannon or even with Aurelia, but they also don't need the tankiness as much. Jax is an Jax is an interesting pick. I'm interested to see where that goes. Um, because Jax, if he beats Renekton, is gonna wreck the game. Like a fed Jax is just not something you want to deal with. Um, whereas a fed Renekton. It still sucks. You don't ever want to fight a Fed champion. But I wouldn't say a Fed Renekton takes a game out of hand. Right. No, that's a really good point. So I'm going to wait for this delay to go over. Just about 15 more seconds. Get done hiccuping. Um, and then I got something really, really interesting to discuss about the bot lane. So in the meantime, remember, blue team, Lissandra... Caitlyn, Sona, Renekton, Xin Zhao, Purple Team will be Nautilus, Lulu, Ezreal, Oriana, and Jax. And now that we are through the delay and we can take down the summoner blockers, Lulu is running Mixed Penetration. And for those of you who not, are not aware, this was uh, this is a, a set of runes and masteries as well as build order that was popularized in Korea a couple months ago for Lulu players. It's a non-GP10 build including Mixed Penetration, uh, reds and I believe a quint as well and this is really something that helps to lend towards Lulu's poke because you're going to be looking at auto attack poke as well as a poke coming out from your EQ combos both of these combined with the mixed penetration will make sure that your auto attacks as well as help picks which is Lulu's passive which adds on a couple of homing bolts to your auto attacks that deal magical damage it helps all of that it helps you get so much poke down and against somebody like Sona and this concerns me a lot. Sona's only running, she's running a CDR, uh, a CDR gold generation page with 21 armor and seven, uh, seven to eight percent cooldown reduction with three gold per 10. This could be a devastating matchup in the bot lane right now. I just don't see Sona winning this. Yeah, I mean, that can definitely be tough, but the, the trade also comes at the difference with Caitlyn over Ezreal. Uh, Caitlyn has a longer auto attack range. So if she's good at dodging Q shots from Ezreal, uh, at least in the initial game, going to have uh, much better poke. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, it, it really is a poke heavy lane from both uh, sides with CC heavy junglers coming into the lane. So it's there's no way this isn't an exciting bottom lane. Uh, my only... My only thought would be Renekton is less gank dependent than Jax is, so we may see some more love bottom lane from Xin Zhao than we do from Nautilus. An excellent point. Hang on one moment. Uh, we got a minute left towards the delay. Hawkeye, go ahead and break a little bit of this down for me. I need to do something real quick. Uh, I mean, with the team comps we're looking at, I really, really like the Lysandra mid-pick. I know she was originally designed as a support, but she turned out to just kind of be a new version of Orianna, a heavy CC, decent damage mid-player. Uh, and we're actually seeing Orianna on the other team, so we're going to have decent uh, team support from both mids along with decent damage. Uh, Lulu and Sona have great poke for being support, so that lane will be very back and forth. Top lane, I think, is where the game is decided. If Jax gets out of hand, I would say ROH is almost certain to win. Whereas if Renekton can hold him off and get his tanky build, 
uh, we could see a very, very strong play from Power Rangers. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what is going to go on in this match. Both teams looking very strong. You know, a limited amount of CC coming out from everybody here. We've only got five seconds left into this delay before we get into skin intimidation, but I'm really excited. Right now, we're looking at both AD carries carrying cleanse. More interesting is the fact that I believe, or pick both ADCs carrying barrier. I'm getting ahead of myself right now. But uh, Jax actually has cleanse. Do you know any reason in particular why he'd pick that up? It, it can be for laning uh, trades with Renekton because Renekton's going to try to lead with his CC immediately. But if he's able to cleanse off that CC and immediately trade back and forth, once he has his ultimate, uh, the passive on his ult is pretty much going to give him every single trade between the two. Um, so it could just be a kind of a laning tactic because Jax knows, hey, I've got to survive. Uh, it also is much more effective with Ghost because uh, he doesn't have the escapability of Flash, but he has the chase of Ghost. Cleanse really helps. Uh, with that, he's going to be decently able to run down his opponents. And, you know, they're fighting a decent CC team. So I can see a lot of reasons to pick that up. Uh, I don't know if it's the best choice or not, because it does limit the Ignites on the team to just Orianas. Uh, but well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how it works out. We'll have to see how it helps him out. And in that initial laning is where I think it'll be the biggest impact. But also in team fights, because if he does get fed, you know, the first thing you have to do to a fed Jax is just lock him down. And that'll make that actually impossible and let him get onto Caitlyn and Sona, which will be his uh, endgame goal. We'll really just have to see what happens at this point as both teams get into the game. I'm curious to see how this will all end up playing out. And oh man, it looks like rain. On a lighter note, though, uh, it looks like the hamsters are uh, are slowly beginning to run faster over for uh, uh, ROH's computers. So hopefully, hopefully they'll be able to get in here soon. So shiny borders coming out all around for many. Oh wow, those are all diamond borders on the part of the blue team. Okay, so shiny borders for everyone from the blue team. Gotcha. Show off. Uh, uh, admit it, Hawkeye. You just wish you had a shiny border. No, I don't. I don't need one. You know what? It's okay. You know why? And you can always laugh at me for this. My my border looks like mustard, and it's not even like a pretty color of mustard. The gold border looks terrible in this game. You know it's true. I think it looks okay. No, it looks terrible. Stop! Stop lying to me to make me feel better, Hawkeye. It looks terrible. I would never lie to you to make you feel better. I don't know about that. <laughs> oh. Alright guys, we're in the game. Hang on a second. You don't need to- Oh, I got told by uh, one of the guys from the finals not to make fun of his gold border. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carrie. I'm sorry. I'll be good. The, so I got some of the guys from the finals, like I know some of the people on their team and they're just sending me messages in the game because right now they're just scouting while uh, while they wait for these guys to get done. So it's uh, it's amusing to say the least. So you can see Oriana pelting out some auto attacks and down in the bot lane and Glitterlands went out as well as a scouting ward. We may see some aggression from ROH here, maybe trying to stop that double golems and early level two in the bot lane. Yeah, I'm interested to see if they're gonna... Now, it looks like they're just defending. I was thinking Ezreal and Lulu might try to go uh, put some pressure on them while they did golems because of the poke they have early game, uh, especially because of the tri-bush ward. Yeah, it'll be... Uh, I mean, I'm curious to see if they're gonna end up going for this. Maybe they're just scouting. They don't want to deal with any invades or anything like that. Uh, but it looks like there's some threats in chat. Zin saying he's going to end up camping mid because Oriana tossed out an auto attack against him. So I'm actually wondering to see if he's actually going to fulfill his promises on this. But we're not seeing any crazy lane swaps yet. We're not seeing any invades. Everything looks to be fairly par for the course as far as things go. You know, Oriana scouting with her ball. It actually looks like Nautilus may be starting red here, which is going to be an interesting start for him. But Renekton has also seen this, so he may be trying to go for an early gank in top. Hopefully, that ends up being thwarted because of that. Down in the bot lane, though, Sona's taken a very, very heavy beating from these double golems right now. She's looking at sitting at about half health. And just, it's unfortunate for her. She's having to chug potions to go ahead and deal with this right now. And she started with a number of sight wards um, 
on on top of her build and fairy charm. So not quite uh, not quite the bulkiest build, but she'll have vision for at least a little while. Whereas exactly what we expected out of Lulu, she's not building for that gold pretend. She's not even worried about it. She's building for that magic uh, magic penetration. She zero GP ten build. She's got those wards, those vision wards, the health potions, and then the cookie. Yeah, and we're seeing more and more of that out of the start from supports, the the really low focus on getting uh, initial items and really just about having that initial utility, all the extra wards, all the extra support abilities. Having a little trouble though, Lulu hasn't landed a whole bunch of the poke. Yeah, it's difficult at level 1 for Lulu to really get that poke down. It's level 2 where it really starts to shine. You're able to go in and place picks onto an enemy target and then aim the Glitter Lance off of that. So those EQ combos are going to start to get more devastating as the game goes on. And you can see them going off there and that is exactly what I'm talking about. You saw the shield go out, end up doing that offensive damage and then immediately after that Glitter Lance came out. The problem with it though is you can see how taxing this is on Lulu's mana right now. She's down below half mana already and the problem is, is she didn't pick up any mana potions at the start of the match with this particular build which is probably not the best way to go about something like that especially when you're looking to run magic penetration you want to be able to have a very aggressive lane and that's not something she can do right now with her mana pool meanwhile the top lane Jax is getting bullied like there's no tomorrow yeah Jax having real problems getting bullied but in bottom lane so is Ezreal uh, I mean, for all the poke damage that Lulu's able to do, Sona's healing it right back up, and Ezreal's taking more punishment than I think he and can handle. And in the handle. top lane, we've got Nautilus coming in for a gank, but a failed hook going out, and that is just not going to happen. Meanwhile, Lysandra in the mid lane, only worried about cleaning up some of those minions, not really concerned about doing too much else right now. Yeah, and I mean, that's, that's the way it's going to go. Lysandra has a good ability to harass while still CSing, so I don't expect to see a whole lot of early aggression unless Lee Sin does fulfill his and promise. And here we go he back in the top lane. We see Nautilus coming in, but that is going to be yet another failed gank out of there. We see Zin Zhao coming up for the counter gank, and there we go. There's a damage coming down in the cleanse and the ghost, but that is going to be it. Jax is going to get first blooded, and we can see the ignite going down onto Nautilus, but it doesn't look like they're going to dive after him. He's just going to back right under the turret. Yep, Xin Zhao went around to try to pick him up if he... Oh, wow, he canceled the back. Oh, wow. So that's oh. been canceled. We might see some dive action going on here in the top lane. Nautilus very low, and there we go. There's the dive action. Nautilus doing his best to get away, and that is going to be a second kill onto Renekton. They don't even care. They knew Zin was going to die going into that. There was no way he wasn't going to die going into that. So an excellent play on the part of that team, taking him down and getting... Essentially, they're trying to stop Jax. They're trying to delay Nautilus. He might get that kill, but it's going to delay his jungle, and those aren't going to be buffs on him anymore. Meanwhile, down in the bot lane, you know, just look at how much damage Ezreal is taking. This poke lane is not working out for them. Lulu just doesn't have the mana to keep up with it, and now she's having to concentrate more on shielding Ezreal than she's able to do so poking. You can even see, looking at her build right now, she's transit. She's actually in Glitter Lance right now. She's maxing that out first. I don't really think that this is going to do too much for her right now. I really think that she's going to end up, you know, really regretting this in the next couple of levels. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what she's able to go back and buy with her first recall. Um, but that lane is not going well. And not for lack of trying on Lulu's part. She's been putting out the poke as, as best she can. But Sona's been healing it up. And Caitlyn's doing a very good job harassing Ezreal. And that's the downside of the poke Lulu. If your AD can't follow up with it because he's so consistently damaged, uh, it really takes that advantage away from you. Yep, and now we can see everybody just returning to their lanes. Now, Zin is um, down in bot lane. He's clearing out doubles right now, but he may also be looking for a gank opportunity. Looks like Sona's setting up with a ward here, and Zin is actually going to loop around, so we may end up seeing this because there's no vision down there from the red team. You can see Zin just getting into position now. He's ready. He's waiting. He's like, we've got this, guys. We could totally do this. Meanwhile, it looks like... E Sona and Caitlyn just trying to get themselves into position, but Zin calling off the gank, deciding that it's just not worth it to hang around there. There wasn't really a good opportunity hard. there. The wave was pushing yeah. uh, with Sona and Caitlyn. Uh, Ezreal and Lulu not being aggressive because they're, I mean, they're already having trouble in that lane. And in the mid lane.
lane we have a gank here the oriana ult having to go out to try and get away zin still pursuing ori but there's the hook coming down from nautilus and now lysander coming in that shield coming down and that is going to be quite a bit burn the flash going down from oriana so you know that's going to be good for her because uh lysandra isn't going to have to worry about that anymore it's going to open up more gank opportunities Oh, yeah, and in ooh. the top lane, we've got even more action. Renekton here taking a lot of damage, and it looks like he's just going to try and go for the kill on to Jax. No, he's actually turning to go ahead and do some damage onto Nautilus, letting both of them get out of there, but at what cost? Jax is going to try and back. I don't think Zen has any sneaky plans for this. They're just going to try and pressure this tower, and Renekton even getting a little bit of Singe farming in. Yep, I mean, when you can farm behind the enemy turret like that, I mean, you go ahead and take it. Yeah, we can are. see here Nautilus coming in. The red buff is being contested right now. Zin able to get that knock up and the hook across the wall. You can see the pings going down. They really need Oriana's help as well as Lysandra's to go ahead and secure this. And you can see there is about to be a brawl brewing here. And that is going to be Oriana scouting that bush. But everybody deciding to back off. Let's take a look at who got that buff real quick because it is certainly not Nautilus. It looks like that went to Zin Zhao. Hell yeah. Good job, Zin. Yeah, very good play there. I mean, what they what happened is they knew they had buff control because of the damage that Renekton had been able to put out on Nautilus. Even if he looped around and found them like he did, they knew it wasn't going to be an issue. Very, very good dice on the slice and dice there from uh, Renekton being able to jump out of that last tick of the uh, the Counter Strike from Jax. Mm -hmm. Ability names are hard sometimes. Ooh, and we do have pause going down. Oh, that would be uh, why there's a DC. Okay, so hopefully we get a reconnect here in just a second. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Ezreal actually said in chat that he was going to try to reconnect. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully we have a second here. I'm going to go run and grab a drink really quick. All right, guys, we'll be back momentarily with the semifinals of the Tower Dive TV weekly number 30. We'll see you momentarily. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back. We're just going to hit that J button to go ahead and jump to live. Ezreal finally back with us. Hopefully this game will get underway and we can see some more action. It is nine minutes into the game. The score is two to one in favor of the blue team right now, taking on a little bit of a gold advantage at about 1.5K. Both top lane and bot lane having some issues against their respective opponents right now. Kate and Sona just able to bully this Lulu so very hard, as well as Ezreal. The concentration that has to go into using that shield for defensive capabilities instead of offensive capabilities is really hurting this bottom lane right now. And of course, those power cords coming out from Sona coupled with that CDR is giving her the ability to just pelt out poke after poke after poke. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we've seen Jax had to go and back and we see this level dominance coming out from Renekton. He's got nearly two levels onto Jax right now and this is really devastating for him. You know, top lane, it's, it's not always about who can farm better. It's not always about, you know, who gets the ganks. But if you have a level or two on your opponent, you're likely going to be snowballing your advantage over them. You can see Jax having to actually sit back on his tower. And in the bot lane, we have Ezreal 
Lulu ult onto him, and there's the crescendo, but it's not going to be enough, and Ezreal will end up falling, and here we go. There's Sona going right after, and that is going to be a dead Nautilus in a 3 for O exchange. Oriana trying to come over the side to see if she can do anything, but she's not going to be able to get any proper positioning on her orb, and she is going to be out of luck. Yeah, smart move by Oriana. They're just not going into the fight. Uh, the crescendo was really good, but I thought Lulu was going to still escape. It was really good follow-up by Caitlyn to still get the kill there. Yep, and now we can see that bot lane tower. We've already seen one tower go down, and now the second tower over here is going to go down. We can see the Ezreal ulti just went out, and that is uh, going to help to clear the wave. It's going to help keep them off. But meanwhile, over at Blue Buff, we have Oriana popping her ulti right now. That auto attack will manage to finish off Zin Zhao as they pick up the second kill. And the flash in the top lane will manage to secure the kill for Renekton as he takes down Jax yet again. And that is going to be here momentarily nearly a three-level advantage. Nautilus coming down. And he's going to land the flash hook down onto Sona. And that is going to be a very, very dead muse as they now transition into Dragon. Yeah, Sona never stood a chance there. Like, that's just too much damage coming down too quickly. And that's why Sona's not broken. As good as she is, that can still happen to her. Like, she doesn't really have any response to that other than a summoner spell. So... You know, that, that is the downside of Sona. You do give up a kill and a dragon there, which has kind of helped keep uh, ROH in this game. Unfortunately, top lane still going very strongly against them. But uh, they're going to try to even it out here. They've lost two turrets. The mid tower's not looking great. But, uh, yeah, it, it's not over. They have a good CC team. They have a good team fight team. They can certainly pull their way back into this. Yeah, it's and here we go in the mid lane. Here's another gank, and the ignite is down, and the flash is out from Oriana, but it may not be enough. As Zin tries to get in here, he wants to go ahead and pick up that kill, but that is going to be the flash down for Oriana. Unfortunately, this is also going to be the ignite down for Lysandra. And oh no, here we go. There's the auto attacks coming out. You can see Zin looking for an opportunity, maybe to double back in here. No, he knows that Nautilus is close by, and Jax isn't in his lane. He knows this isn't a favorable engagement. And now it looks like. Oh no, he's going to face check this bush and Renekton better come down quick and there's the ultimate going out as he looks to try and get up into that top lane. Oh no, Zin, what are you doing? And here we go, here's Renekton coming around and oh, that is going to be a dead Zin Zhao, but will... Nope, it looks like Lysandra's coming up. They're going for a little bit of a chase here and here we go. That is going to be the kill for Lysandra and one for Renekton and a two for one engagement yet again in the favor of the blue team. That was really good by Lysandra. By all accounts, they should have all gotten out of there fine, but Lysandra made a beautifully clutch play to come in and lock down uh, Nocturne, or Nocturne, good lord, Nautilus and <laughs> Jax. Yeah, and down in the bot lane, we can see this poke going down and the whimsy going off, and there we go. There's the knockup followed by the Glitterland. So much CC coming out of Lulu, but nobody there really to capitalize on it right now. Lulu doing her best to try and keep up with this. Caitlyn continuing in with the CC, but there's the crescendo, and that is going to be it. They're going to get out of there without taking any damage from that Ezreal ulti. Yeah, and mid tower now taking some very, very serious punishment. Ezreal's going to get up here, but I don't think there's anything he can do. It is going to fall. And Lysandra, every time you see that ice claw coming out, like you just have to run because you never know if she's going to jump to it and just wreck your day. Nice. So we'll see Nautilus going ahead and picking up that red buff yet again. The pings going down around blue buff as Oriana looks to take that and down. And I mean, pretty much every lane, it, they have four turrets right now. They've got so much map control. Red team is just a dominating force at this point. And, and I'm really impressed to see what they've been able to pull out. I've not seen this. I don't believe I've actually seen this team play before. I'm sure they might have played before, but I haven't personally seen them play. And I'm really impressed to see what they can, uh, what, what they're doing against ROH, which has been such a dominant force in this entire tournament. They've got a huge gold lead at such a low point in the game. 15 minutes into the game, all this map control. They've got dominance in all their lanes. I'm just really impressed right now. Yeah, they really put together a good run here. And, you know, we've watched ROH in these last few games. They're a force to be reckoned with, especially in the laning phase. So to beat them in the laning phase shows really, really good play from Power Rangers. Just, again, because we've seen kind of this slow and steady... Uh, 
play style from ROH worked very well for him. So when you're beating a team in their own play style, I mean, that's, that's about as good as a game can get. Yeah, absolutely. And now we can see the pink wards coming out. And here is where... Uh, and here's where we kind of see the uh, the vision control slowly start to dwindle away from the red team. Their wards are going to become more and more reclusive in their own jungle as they have to start protecting their own buffs. So it's just, uh, it's, it's going to be rough. Well, and it's pretty much the exact opposite. It's what we've seen ROH do to other teams all day. Take those oh, outer towers, slowly push in. And this is an ultimate, and we can see Lysandra coming in there, followed by the crescendo, and there we go. There is one kill on Oriana. Caitlyn going to pick up Ezreal with that auto attack, and now Nautilus in a world of pain. He's going to flash, but oh, is it going to be enough? Sona flashing over the wall. He will go for the hook, but it looks like he's going to get away. And what is it? Oh, Caitlyn's coming back in here, and it looks like they're going to take the tower, and yeah, that is going to be it. Caitlyn picking up that kill and a three for one engagement and in the top lane we have Renekton looking for the potential dive right now he's got three levels over this poor Jax right now he's just gonna go back to do some behind the turret farming you can see him bullying the crap out of this guy Zen even coming up now and it looks like the ultimate has been used by Renekton and there we go a last auto attack from Zen we'll go ahead and finish that off and now the turret that turret is so dead right now yeah I mean that's gonna be a continual problem now and we have Renekton just got so far and, ahead. Yeah, we have Oriana and Lulu coming up here, and there we go. We will get a little bit of damage onto Renekton, but they're going to be forced to stop the chase. And, oh my goodness, seriously, 16 minutes and nearly a 10k gold lead? Like, ah, just, ow, ow. Yep, it's like I'm... solo queue all over again. Well, it's interesting is it's very well coordinated solo queue. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's both teams winning exactly. off. Like, coordination, if the game had gone this bad, it'd be because there's one dominant player. But with these two teams, they're both teams that have very good team coordination. So we're seeing like a very, very coordinated version of solo queue uh, where the teams are winning because they're playing together and both sides are playing together and communicating fairly well. Yeah, and now we can see both teams just trying to regroup right now. And this is what I'm kind of talking about, about the receding vision of the red team. They've got one semi-offensive ward on the map, and it's really only there for objective control. Everything else that they're going to be putting out over the next few minutes, it's all going to be in their jungle, where if you look at the blue team's warding, their entire jungle is lit up. And now Lulu has been caught out, and there is going to be the ace in the hole. I don't think it's going to be enough. You can see the ultimate coming out from Lulu, and there we go. That is going to be it. Ezreal getting down very low, and the Orianna ult coming out, but Ezreal looks like he's going to be able to get away with only a sliver of health. Yeah, and able to send his ult back into the fight, too. So that really exactly. was a uh, good job from Ezreal. Like, I was yeah. convinced when that, like, Sandra all went off. I was like, oh, Ezreal's dead. But no, he escaped and sent an ult back into the fight, which I think was a major reason that Blue Team was like, all right, forget the turret, let's just get Dragon. Exactly. There's no need to worry about that. You know, they have complete control over these objectives. Not Oh, and Renekton caught out here. You can see the blue team has gotten the Dragon Nautilus. Not able to steal that, but he is going to pay for this now. And he is going to fall. And now Oriana will die as well, unfortunately, having no way to back out of that. And that will be a two-for-one exchange as well as the Dragon in favor of the blue team. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> There was just, there was no bright spot in that for ROH. They were continually pushed around in that fight. And really, I think this, most of this game just comes down to the, the bet on Jax not paying off. You know, if the roles were reversed and Jax had five kills, they would be wrecking this game. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. Jax fell really far behind Renekton, and now he's just not effective in game. He doesn't have the the money to really be an effective presence. Yeah, more so than that, I mean, if they stall this out long enough, they may have a chance. Jax is one of those characters who sees a ticking time bomb, and you can see Caitlyn getting caught out here. I don't believe they'll be able to catch up for this, but no, there's the Oriana speed buff coming out, and it looks like she's actually going to manage to get away. But um, more so than what we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, it just if, if Jax manages to get a couple kills, 
like I said, he's a ticking time bomb. The longer the game goes on, the better chance he's going to have to snowball and just decimate in fights. But they did such a good job of keeping him down in the laning phase. That time period is going to be greatly delayed, at least another 10 to 20 minutes. And that's not going to be something I believe that the red team will be able to stall out for. Because now you can see Jax has just become the punching bag for the team as he's going to end up falling here to Renekton. And now Ezreal going to be forced to back off as they take this base turret. And Zinn even coming in the barrier, coming out from Ezreal. And it doesn't look like he's going to be able to do anything. He's going to be forced to get back into the base. And here we go. Here's Orion. And Lulu, and oh my goodness, Lysandra is going to go ahead and get out of there. There's the Lulu ultimate going down, and Renekton is going to manage to pick her up and now be forced to try and get out of here. And it may, looks like he's going to go for the double kill onto Orianna. Maybe go even for the triple kill here. No, there's the ultimate, and that is a well coordinated ultimate on the part of Caitlyn as will manage to pick up that 3 for 0 exchange. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, 4 for 0. Jax went down too. That was incredible. Yeah, and but, now we can like, see, oh man, Jax caught out yet again. And this poor, this poor Renekton going very low. A lovely Crescona, crescendo coming out from Sona as Zen comes in. And now we can see the damage once again being focused down onto Jax. He's going to go ahead and be taken out as Nautilus picks up the kill onto Zen Zhao. This is just I'm sorry. a Renekton that there's, won't die. I know, I know. There's just so much damage. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was crazy. And, you know, there was nothing. Like, ROH did a lot right in that fight. They had very, very good play from uh, Ezreal. He was able to get his ult onto the fleeing Lysandra and uh, Xin Zhao, and they still didn't die. It just, you got to feel bad for him in that fight. They did everything right and still got trashed. Yeah, that was just unfortunate to watch. It was, it was so rough to see what happened there, you know. It, it was. It has to be hard for the red team right now. You know they're very far behind. Fifteen thousand gold at twenty minutes is nothing to scoff at. Um, if they're gonna have to drag this game out at least another twenty to twenty-five minutes if they really want a chance to come back. Their only chance of coming back right now is banking on the. Uh, on a game late enough that everybody gets to their full item builds and it all comes down to a single team fight or if the blue team starts throwing like there is literally no tomorrow somebody dc's their entire base gets ddos or something like that it's gonna take a lot for the red team to come back right now is what i'm stressing and if they could i if, if the red team ends up coming back from this it will be one of the greatest comebacks in the entire league of legends history like i cannot possibly fathom it happening but if it did i would i would be so impressed and give them first place right away before they even got into the finals oh man but yeah i mean it's just it's looking very rough for them yeah i, I don't i don't really see this turning for for red team at any point they're down 15 kills almost 15,000 gold uh, they're about to lose another tower, which is going to make the mid push even stronger. I mean, the only real bright spot they've oh, had. Oh all... no! Oh. <laughs> oh, that was unfortunate to watch. Oh, Ariana. Oh. Just not wanting to save. Well, yeah, missing the save there. Here we go for there. the engagement. The Lissandra all coming out as well as the Lulu all, but it's not going to save her from the kill. And we can see the crescendo going out onto Jackson. This is going to be the end of him as well as the game. Blue team takes it home at 25 to 5 at 23 minutes in the game. Yeah, nobody going to be able to. Well, Ezreal will be up, but I don't think he's going to be able to do anything. Well, they don't have their AD carry here. Caitlyn was still working on. Inhibitors, which is strange because they pretty much can end the game here. There's there's the surrender vote, and oof, that's rough. That's really rough because, I mean, ROH has played so well today. They've had very, very good games, and that was just a rough, rough end to their day.